What's up, folks? This is Steel. Welcome back to Steelcast 27 once again. Today I have the Tier 7 American battleship Colorado, a ship with a with a much maligned reputation. Recently buffed, though, to take it from what the hell to all right. <laughs> Now, I have to be completely honest with you. As far as battleships go, the Colorado is kind of tough to play and kind of tough to like. I think there's a lot of players out here that out there that don't like playing the Colorado, and I can completely understand where they're coming from with this ship. It certainly doesn't mean every player is not going to like playing it, but I'm going to go over it anyway. The one thing about U.S. battleships is their lack of speed, and that really, really starts to hurt at Tier 7 where the Colorado comes in. You start to see bigger maps, ships with longer ranges, with more accuracy, and you start seeing monsters like the North Carolina, the Amagis, the Iowas. But I'll get into that a little bit more later. For my mods, I picked the main battery mod one, and that's negative 20% to getting your uh, main batteries incapacitated. But you have a choice here. See, there's a lot of players out there that like the AA role. So you might want to choose AA survivability here. I don't necessarily do that, but 20% to AA survivability is understandable to take. For the second slot, I'm, I'm taking the Artillery Plotting Room, which is 16% to your gun range. I think for the Colorado, that is super, super critical. This thing has a pitiful gun range stock, and to get it to be average at best, you have to get as much gun range as you possibly can. Again, here you have an AA option, 20% to AA range. Again, understandable if you like captains with a lot of AA. And this thing has really good AA. So if you wanted to buff it, it would be really an AA, an AA beast. <laughs> but of course, you won't be able to hit anything with your main guns. Next, I'm obviously taking the damage control system mod one. I think those uh, effects are crucial for battle battleships. And in light of the other options you have, uh, <laughs> finally, the steering the steering mod for battleships now avoiding torpedoes is the most important thing the battleships can do you're gonna get torpedoed so getting that steering mod is really really helpful for that quick reaction when you need to avoid them they are devastating when they hit especially at higher tiers get the steering mod all right now so let's get into the fun stuff we're starting off with the artillery like I said before recently buffed with a 19.4 kilometer range and that's with uh, the mods as you saw and the researchable mods the 10% upgrade there as far as range I think out of 11 possible battleships you can face from tier 6 to tier 9 you can you'll come in ninth still so it's really not the best range look at the AG though the damage isn't high but the 36% chance to fire that could be really helpful when you're in those uh, those high tier matches where there's no chance that you're going to get very many penetrating citadels on your opposing battleships like the Iowas and stuff. Okay, next, let's get into the AA. 56 rating. Now, to put that in perspective, that's like Cleveland AA. Now, obviously without the uh, the super skill that they the Cleveland has, the burst damage, but that's still really good. You, want to, might, you might want to look into getting that manual AA, though, for your captain. Um, that's 100% or basically times two your, the damage output of your guns that are 85 millimeters or higher. And with the Colorado, you do have 127 millimeter guns, eight of them. So that will effectively take your damage per second from 64 to one, oh, uh, 128 which is actually pretty good, but keep in mind that's only those long-range guns. Most of your AA firepower is going to still come from the short-range stuff. As far as maneuverability is concerned, like I said, this thing is slow. Very, very slow. But that rudder shift time with that mod is going to help. But look at that turn radius. That's an amazing turn radius. Finally, the concealment, there's really nothing to say here. It's a battleship you're going to be seen. Okay, enough for the statistics. Let's take this thing into a training room. What I'm going to test is its maneuverability, some practical maneuverability. 
some armor modeling features against 8 inch shells from cruisers and also some shells against battleships to see how it performs and how it takes hits. Yo ho ho, welcome to the training room. Now, this test I'm going to perform to you for you today is basically a practical test for battleships. I'm going to angle up towards uh, another battleship, take a shot, and then do a 180 and time to see how fast it can re-engage the same target. So basically, you're doing a reversal. You're doing a retreat. So let's see here. We got a Nagato max range. We're going to fire at him and then immediately start turning out. And then I'm going to do a trick here. This is what I do is I look the opposite way and then hold and right click and hold the right mount the right mouse button. That starts getting those turrets spinning. And I'm going to I do that all the time, especially if I know which way I'm going to turn. So here I'm all about about halfway through the turn. And you can see those turrets are spinning around already. Now those front guns wouldn't have been uh wouldn't have been turning if I had held like the normal position. So here I want to see how long it takes. And they're just about ready. The rear guns are ready. The front guns are ready. There. All right. That's about 50 seconds. That's not too bad. And I think it's because of the tight turning radius. And the, I mean, obviously you have to factor in the um, turret traverse as well. But if you get a head start on that, it really helps. All right, next up, you can see it's a Pensacola. I picked the Pensacola for this AP test simply because it has the longest uh, rifles. And, and, and Wargaming doesn't really give out that much statistics as far as, like, pen values of guns. So these are, uh, I think, 57s. So they have a lot of pen. Not too much damage there. It looks like they ricocheted off the nose of the Colorado. And... I don't think I'm going to get much here. Now, the Colorado is really strong. I mean, it's got very, very good armor. I think it's 343 millimeters max. But look at that. I'm incapacitating the turret already, and that's why I took that module that I showed you earlier, that 20%. And I think I'm going to wind up knocking out this, this gun. It's already damaged but I'm going to knock it out. Look at the belt, though. You can see where the belt is. The issue is I'm not citadeling anything, but I'm getting penetrations there. It's knocked out. <laughs> oh, man. But I'm getting penetrations, a lot of penetrations, and that's really the one of the negatives to the Colorado. Um, it has really good citadel armor against 8-inch rounds. It can still be sit against battleships, but it's got low amount of hit points comparatively to the Nagato. It's only got 50,000 hit points. And when you can start getting penetrated in the casemate and along the belt, I mean, citadels don't matter. You're s if it's that easy to penetrate, three penetrating shots is equal to a citadel. And here, it's just like I can't not penetrate this thing all over the place just penetration the only thing that's saving <laughs> this Colorado right now is the fact that its hit point threshold is dropping so the amount of damage that I'm doing with AP is dropping as well <laughs> but yeah there's not there's no citadels here I'm completely flat you can knock out the turrets though we will learn that yeah I'm not gonna get any citadels here so I'm gonna move on to the next phase of the testing which is to see how the Colorado fares against itself and a higher tier battleship just for fun. Okay, now I'm lining up a bunch of Colorados to get shot at by my Colorado for a little while. Um, and the test isn't necessarily to see if I can get citadels or what the citadel percentage is. Those are, you know, long term statistics because you can get two citadels in one shot and then no citadels the next four shots and that kind of thing. So I'm not testing that per se. Um, you could, pr you know that you're going to get Citadel broadside against other battleships that are the same tier. And the Colorado does have actually <laughs> some pretty good guns. But what I'm really kind of trying to test here, look at that shot. 
good lord, like I was saying. <laughs> Two citadels in one shot. But what I'm trying to test here is, I'm, I'm trying to show you actually that the Colorado isn't necessarily as tough as people think it is or think it should be. And the reason isn't necessarily because of the citadel. I mean, like I said, you're going to get sit. It's because it gets penetrated. Um, anywhere you shoot this thing, you get 0.33 pens. And if you add that with a citadel shot, you're getting upwards of, you know, 20. And you saw just a second ago, 30,000 damage. But combine that with the fact that the Colorado has so few hit points to give, it makes that those large damage numbers so much more impactful, I mean, for your game. Uh, when you're potentially receiving half of your health to disappear on one salvo or more than half your health, it really, really affects you. And then considering the fact that Colorado's Compendium, Amagi's Compendium, Pensacola's Compendium, lower tier ship's Compendium, if you're broadside, um, that's a lot of damage you're taking. You're not bouncing as many shots as you'd think. And it's not just bouncing. You're just not giving anybody any overpens. Every time someone hits you, it's going to be a .33. And three hits is, is equal to a citadel. Like, look at that shot. I didn't... I didn't give up a Citadel, but I still gave up 14... It, it still gave up 14,000... I... <laughs> it still gave up 14,000 damage. I mean, that's a Citadel and a pen. Well, I think I'm belaboring the point at this point. <laughs> but I'm going to get one more shot off and see what happens. All right, rounds away. And... 9,000 and change. I mean, let's, let's round that up for the sake of argument. 10,000. That's a fifth of your life. No citadels. <laughs> That's all just regular pens. Okay. Let's make this situation even worse. <laughs> Put it up against an Amagi. I have a feeling this isn't going to end well, and it's not. Um, this is an Amagi right now shooting a Colorado straight on. All right, no overpens, no bounces, all just regular old penetrating hits and a turret incapacitation. Now, when you're playing in your Colorado and you take, you know, five hits from a battleship when you're angled or pointed directly at them, it's pretty unlock unlucky, I get it. But you're taking 10,000 damage. You're thinking, how did they hit my Citadel? Well, they didn't. They just got a bunch of regular pens and you just lost 14,000 damage. Again, another five-figure regular pen shot. Now, half your half your life is almost gone. And consider the fact that you're probably on fire by now. You're probably getting shot at by cruisers. You're probably getting <laughs> torped. Oh man, the Colorado just can't. It just can't do anything against uh, battleship guns, and that's why it's not as strong as people think. Now, granted, I didn't test the uh, plunge factor of 16-inch shells against the Colorado Citadel from an angle, but I think if you play the, play the game enough, you'll realize that Amagis and North Carolinas can plunge your Citadel at an angle and still penetrate the sit. And, but the point that I'm trying to make here, and I think I'm overemphasizing it, is that the problem with the Colorado is its low hit points and the fact that it gives up too many .33 pens. All right, so let's move it into a real match and see how she does. Here we are on Trap, one of my least favorite maps for battleships, um, <laughs> especially Colorado's. Um, and it's a, a Tier 8 match, so that means I'm going up against North Carolinas and Amagis. Ugh. And the Colorado... Oh my god, against those beasts. It's going to be rough. And maps like the like Trap, you have to commit. And um, and I don't I don't have the speed to go to C from this part of the map. I don't want to go to B because then you're just focused. So it kind of forces you to go to A. And I don't like A because you get trapped down there. 
I think that's why they called this this map trap. Because A is a trap. <laughs> but anyway, in a Colorado, you want to move forward and get in, uh, get your guns into range of anything that could could potentially be spotted. And here, the uh, carrier does a good job of spotting some enemies. I am tentatively heading heading to, heading to A because I expect to turn in at some point. I don't want to go around A. I think this takes you out of the match and you're going to be facing against uh, angled ships and usually <laughs> without support because either your teammates have died and started retreating and when you turn around it, you're the one getting shot at and while your friends just drive away. But here, yeah, I'm trying to angle in for mid shots. Once again, really good spotting from the team. Destroyers getting spotted at B are really, really important. Now he just drops spots because the carrier left. I'm keeping an eye on all those airplanes. Now, the Colorado does have really good rudder, uh, a very good turn radius. <laughs> and that helps against torpedoes, especially if you know that they're coming. So you want to keep keep an eye out for those those tour bombers, but it looks like our carrier's got air superiority package, perhaps maybe he doesn't, but I just saw a lot of fighters over there, so I assume that he did. And it's very dangerous to go to B as a cruiser, especially if your team is is forward and spotting, and you have carrier matches. A speed cap and a cruiser is very dangerous. My goal here with the Colorado is to get in the position to shoot. So I've accomplished that, even though I only, only go 20 knots. Here we're lining up in Aoba, completely broadside. Now Aobas have, they're, they're, they're sneaky, because they're slick. It's hard to hit them because they have such a low profile. So anticipating whether or not they like to turn in or out is important. And that guy, he turned in that time. I was anticipating him to try to hug that mountain a little bit more and not go in a complete straight line. Now I'm thinking I'm just thinking the same thing. He's going to turn out eventually, correct? <laughs> now I think he's just trying to make a beeline out of there. He's taking too much fire. I think those are good rounds. Does he look like he's slowing down? That would be really bad. Nope. Those look good. And we get one. Boom. It doesn't take much. And then there's another one. Another cruiser. Doing the mid push. I've done the mid pushing before in the cruiser, so I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> for better or for worse. Now he's dropping throttle. I don't know, man, if that's a good idea. <laughs> You'll 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 miss or make somebody miss their first shot, but then when they adjust, you're just stuck. Now Colorado has the dispersion of 211 meters, and that time it didn't do many any favors. 211 is actually pretty good, I think. Yeah, no favors on that shot. I should have been able to kill him. But yeah, destroyers, man, getting spotted in the mid. He's way too close to our side. That Hatsuharu. Let's see if I can finish it. Now, one thing I have noticed on trap um, when you're low tiers going up against North Carolinas is they behave very, very uh, tentatively. Like they don't like to commit, and um, so they'll just sit back at E2 and point their nose at you and they can shoot across the entire map here I was late recognizing this uh, Nagato here but good thing I'm angled already and here I'm going to demonstrate a hit, hit with the Colorado that you just can't not take a lot of damage and he's completely broadside now obviously I missed that that was a good shot on my part but he dropped throttle and then maybe I gave him a little bit too much angle here Maybe not. Like, so I'm thinking I, I took maybe four or five hits there, and as we know, they're all going to be penetrating shots. 
So that's basically a citadel and two pens just because he landed some shots on me. Now, it wasn't a difficult shot. I was going low, th slow. I was going half throttle. But here I recognize that I'm starting to get shot at by guys in the middle. Is that a Katus off? And um, I want to catch these guys coming out of this, uh, coming between these islands. I think that's what they're, they're looking at to shoot me, and I want to shoot back at them. I might not have... This is that 180 turn test. How about that? This match is actually really good <laughs> for the testing. I'm showing you getting hit. I'm showing you with the 180 turn. Now, if only I could spot him, I would have been able to take a shot. And I think it's too late there. He's going really slow, and I knew I didn't have that much how much that much time to take a shot, and I overestimated that. Oh man, I wish I had that one back. I could have crushed him. Good thing our destroyer's there to take advantage, though. Those are nice torps. And I think he's safe, too. I think he's in smoke. Yeah, man, I wish I had that shot back. Man. I'm going to try to sneak a couple more rounds in, but that mountain really is messing my mojo up. I don't want to hit the mountain, but I also don't want to miss. It's a really tight window. Let's see if I can get... There we go, a couple hits. Don't know how much damage it was, but... Now, facing A. It looks like we might lose A. I'm, I'm sorry, facing C. We might lose A. But we might not. Either way, I'm in position. I'm not... Oh, it's a stock of Magi. Ooh, baby. Now, the Colorado's 16 inches can definitely pen in an Amagi. In that regard, I can't complain about the Colorado, especially if it's in range. The fact that it's stock makes it a better chance for citadels. Oh, nice. But got a couple hits on him and only shaved off maybe a quarter to a third of his health. And he hit me with the same amount of hits. I would have lost half my health. <laughs> so I'm looking for broadside ships here. And then here we go. A guy, I think, in his first playthrough on a North Car North Carolina. Now, is he heading forwards or backwards? He's heading backwards. Look at that smoke. It's telling me that he's heading backwards. Please give me a Citadel. I'd love to Citadel North Carolina right now. Oh, I knocked out a turret, though. Got some good pens. All right, so it's time for me to start heading to sea. I think our team needs some help up there. But there's this big, huge mountain in the way. So <laughs> I'm going to skip ahead until I get around this mountain. And I'm back. Just got rounds out on an Amagi. The same stock Amagi. Oh, man, you got to love citadels. This is brawling, basically. A tier 6 Fuso that's low health against a North Carolina and an Amagi. This is not good. At least I have some hit points to spare. But that's 10 plus 9 guns. It's 19 guns I have to face. And bombers. That Fuso better keep angled. If he turns out, he's in trouble. It doesn't matter. I think he's too low a health at this point. AP right through the... AP right through the nose. See if I can get some pens. Nothing. Now that's really disappointing. So, what do I do? I switch to HE. He's such low health... I wish I didn't, because he's full broadside again. He loves giving the broadsides. And I wasn't there to capitalize on it. But HE will do the job, I think. If I set him on fire, knocked out a turret. Jeez Louise. But I did set a fire on him, and good, good. I got good damage on that. He could burn out. Against higher tier battleships, always be prepared to shoot HE. Um, especially if they're like, you know, you think their repair parties on cooldown because you have a really high 36% on Colorado. That's three hits, and you're probably going to get a fire. Ugh, taking too many hits here. Now, this time I have AP loaded, but I'm not aiming like I have AP loaded. 
that's just terrible. That's just a bunch of overpens. I could have finished him right there with a the Citadel. Wish I had that one back too. But I think I'm more concerned about surviving and angling. There, I got the Amagi. That's crucial. But I'm still way too low a health to be able to take any hits. I used my repair party already. Okay, this North Carolina, he's frustrated. He's frustrated with me. So he, I think he might be going after this uh, destroyer. <laughs> there, another bad shot, but I did get out. I knocked out his gun. Stagger fire. Not the best shooting on my part. Or the best dispersion. Come on. Oh, I think the Torps are going to get him. Yep. The Torps got him. Might have been able to finish him off. But I'm glad the team was there to help me. Looks like we cleaned up at A. And our, we lost B in the meantime. Now this... Now this Otago. This is also a sneaky ship. Low profile. Very maneuverable. I, I was impressed with the throttle responsiveness on the Otago. I've never played one, but I've seen them played well, and they're really tough to hit, especially in the hands of a, you know, a, a, player, that's, a player that's aware of what's going on. <laughs> now, I don't think he had a choice but to beach. I don't think he wanted to beach, <laughs> but... <laughs> Still don't want to face off against a battleship with an, uh, with a cruiser. And I wish I had... It's hard to judge ships that are going backwards. It really is. Our is in sight. But yeah, the Otago, I think it's one of those tier 8s that you might want to consider buying as a premium. I think it's that good. I think it's very capable at its tier. Especially if you play it well. I actually consider buying one too but it was a little rich for my blood. Well, this match is practically over, so I'll do a little recap with the Colorado. You can have good matches in this thing, but you really have to play it very, very smart. You have to be focused, aggressive, but also ready to turn out because this thing does not take as many hits as advertised, simply because even though it can bounce Citadel shots, it takes too many .33s, as the training room showed. Its guns are pretty good. The dispersion's really good. The turn radius is awesome. So it does have the ability to survive, but you have to play it well. And even if you do, you're going to have some matches where you're just too late to the party, and it's going to frustrate you. The range is going to be too short. You're going to be chasing ships all around the map without uh, the speed. So I hope you have fun in it. I hope you do well, and good luck on getting to North Carolina. <laughs> hey everybody, thanks for watching. Feel free to like or comment, and if you're interested in seeing more content in the future, subscribe. My live stream is currently on Twitch, at the URL you can see right there. And if you're interested in even more World of Warships videos, I highly recommend The Taste. The link is down below. Thanks again.